Hello, Spoonie Liger here. Welcome to my newest art time lapse video. This time I'm working on another Pokemon Mystery Dungeon fan art featuring Persian from Rescue Team's Felicity Bank. I'm also trying something new with this video. I have written up my very first Pokemon fanfic and will be reading it to you. The fanfic is called Pokemon Scouts and it focuses on a small team of Pokemon training to become Pokemon Scouts. Claire, a feisty Shinx, and Luna, a careful Chimchar, are both under the instruction of their teacher, Master Lore, a wise and strong Greninja. As Pokemon Scouts, Claire and Luna must take on the duty of searching for and saving other Pokemon that have been taken control of by vicious, maroon-collared, green-eyed nocturnal beasts known as Noctings. In this first chapter of the story, the team goes out on their first field assignment, a supposedly low rank mission that takes an interesting and expected turn. So, before we get started, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and give this video a like to enhance your viewing experience by tenfold. And finally, without further ado, let's get started with Pokemon Scouts Chapter 1, The First Assignment. The rustling of bush leaves and the sounds of small twigs cracking under the weight of scurrying footsteps had made themselves guests in the heart of an otherwise quiet forest. From behind the trees and through the few beams of sunlight dancing between them, two silhouettes swiftly switched back and forth from trunk to trunk, being careful not to catch the attention of their prey. From up on top of thick tree branches, a slim blue figure watched carefully. It was a Greninja supervising its two apprentices moving around down below, a feisty shinx and a cautious chimchar. Then, the gentle murmur of the forest momentarily made its return, as just below the tree branches, the two apprentices halted their chase. Their prey was now within reach. They peeked out from behind the trunks, and then looked up at their teacher. The Greninja slowly raised his hand, and the two Pokemon ready themselves. Then, in one swift motion, the hand extended forward with a pointing index. The two Pokemon jumped out from behind the trees and ambushed their prey. A bipedal creature with slick maroon fur and big glowing green eyes stood between them. Surprised by the ambush, it took an offensive stance and attempted to intimidate with a menacing meow? Huh? started the Shinx, relaxing from her battle stance. This tiny little thing is our first feel assignment? What's the deal? She asked her teacher, now lying comfortably on his tree branch, twirling a flower with a long stem hanging from his mouth. It's an F rank assignment. Get to it, exasperated the Greninja before lazily turning the other way, his voice echoing deep into the forest. Well, it's half as tall as I am, continued the Shinx, as her partner quietly chuckled at their annoyance. Calmly approaching the not-so-intimidating, growling creature, Shinx commented, but I can just boop it on the hat and it'll go bye-bye. Come on, Claire, said the Chimchar, rolling her eyes at her partner. Stop making fun of it and take your assignment seriously. It's all good, Luna. I got this in the bag. Watch this, said Claire, immediately after proceeding to give the creature a gentle headbutt. Flinching slightly, the creature kept its stance, leering and growling angrily at Claire, her forehead still pushing down on the creature. Hey, come on, demanded Claire under her breath, giving the creature additional headbutts. Let go of the Pokemon already. Claire, said Luna, still chuckling at the situation in front of her. Can you please stop playing around? The creature grew irritated. Its growling now rising in pitch, purple ribbons of light slowly began to emanate from it. What the? said Claire, taking a couple of steps back. Huh? Greninja, casually looking over his shoulder, had taken notice of this new development. Claire, watch out! exclaimed Luna. A purple glow had now enveloped Claire, as she gradually lifted off the ground. Whoa, whoa, whoa! she shouted, flailing as she went. Using its psychic abilities, the creature had picked up Claire off the ground, and then quickly chucked her off against the tree. Gah! yelped Claire, falling back down to the base of the tree. Claire! shouted Luna, 
hurrying over to help Claire get back up. Ow! started Claire. Hey, what gives? she demanded from her teacher. The Greninja, now sitting on his branch, watching with curiosity, shrugged and as if struggling for words, replied with, Uh, I don't know, a Frank assignment? Before Claire could roll her eyes in response, the maroon creature had already shot a purple beam of light their way. Nearly avoiding this attack, the two apprentices had jumped and rolled off in opposite directions. A dust cloud now rising where the two had stood just a moment ago. Luna, you good? asked Claire, now standing in high alert. It, yeah, replied Luna, keeping her eyes on the growling creature. I don't think we should take this thing lightly, Claire. Agreed, let's finish this quick, said Claire. Suddenly, the creature began to let out a loud, screeching wail. Claire and Luna cringed at the noise as they were rendered almost immobile. From the pouch Luna carried over her shoulder, she pulled out an orb, held it high above herself, and shouted, Silence Orb! The orb suddenly shone brightly for a moment before the creature's mouth was enveloped by the same light and shut silent. Having recovered from its immobility, Claire growled and began charging towards the creature before biting its ear and holding on. The creature yelped and tried to struggle Claire off, shortly before attempting to use its psychic abilities again to retaliate. Claire recognized the same attack from earlier and let go of the creature's ear, running off to make some distance between them. The creature, however, now free from its mouth binding, kept building up for its attack. With Luna now making her approach from behind, with fire flickering from between her teeth. The creature, however, had made note of Luna's approach and turned around to face her before finally lashing out with its psychic attack. Caught by surprise, Luna was violently flung in the air as embers flew out of her mouth, falling back down and rolling over small rocks and tree roots. Luna! shouted Claire. The creature had now turned its attention back to Claire. She righted herself for the creature's next move and began to charge up electrical power within herself. The creature slowly began to glow as it raised itself above ground. Claire, now enveloped in a pale blue light, with lightning occasionally dancing and crackling around her body, began to kick dirt behind her with her hind legs, winding up for a tackle. Then, waves of air pressure began to rhythmically pulse out of the creature as the purple light enveloping it began to gradually brighten. Claire knew this was their chance and took off running towards her opponent with a trail of lightning following behind as she gained incredible speed. Suddenly, Claire and the creature were sent flying in opposite directions as a large object of water intersected their clash. Slowly sitting up from her earlier fall, Luna recognized one of her teacher's water shuriken piercing the ground where the creature once stood. As the shuriken suddenly lost its shape, and its water spilled onto the ground, the Greninja dropped back down from the tree branches where he once stood, making his way to the fallen Shinx. Here, eat this, said the Greninja to his pupil, placing an orange berry to her mouth. Luna, after pulling an orange berry of her own out of her pouch to gain her strength back, got up on her feet and walked towards her teacher and her partner. On her way, she stopped as she noticed the maroon creature knocked out unconscious on the forest floor by her feet. She stared, puzzled at the disparity she found between the creature's size and its power. It almost froze her in fear. Claire and her teacher walked up to take a closer look at the creature themselves. Greninja, kneeling down to place a hand on the shoulder of a clearly perplexed Luna, asked, Hey, are you alright? Luna looked at her teacher, and before looking back down at the creature by her feet, asked, What happened, Master Lore? Was this a mistake? I think it was, quickly responded her teacher. This knock thing showed a tremendous power towards the end that was very unexpected, he continued as he got back up on his feet. Either the reports we got on it were clearly inaccurate, or this is a completely different knock thing than the one we were assigned to. Claire audibly gulped at the mystery presented before them. Then, the creature's body began to shake, and the three backed up a few feet. Suddenly, 
a slick maroon mass began to pull itself off of the body of the creature and finally detached itself with a snappy ripping sound, leaving behind a furry, gray Pokemon. A fangy face with green glowing oblong eyes stretched out of the maroon mass that had left the Pokemon. After growling and barking at Master Lure and his pupils, it faded into the shadow of a nearby tree. The three slowly approached the Pokemon now lying unconscious before them. They recognized it as an Esper. Luna, try squeezing a few drops of juice out of your orange berry in its mouth, asked Master Lure. Luna proceeded to follow her master's request, gently placing drops of juice from her half-eaten berry on the Esper's tongue. Then, they slowly approached the Pokemon's face, curious for a reaction, and suddenly, its eyes opened wide, scaring the three off their feet. After a moment, the Esper slowly got up and looked around. Claire carefully approached the Pokemon and greeted it. Hi! Are you all right? she asked. The Esper stared at Claire for a moment with a stoic expression before finally breaking into a smile and answering her concerns. Hello, I'm feeling all right, said the Esper. That's good. We just rescued you from a Noctin that had taken control of you, Claire explained. It put up quite a fight. If it wasn't for Master Lore coming in the nick of time, I don't think we would have made it. Lore and Luna rejoined with Claire to meet the Esper, but the Pokemon looked a bit confused at them. Um, started the Esper, I don't think I know what a knock thing is. That's fine, said Luna. Everyone who gets mind controlled by a knock thing usually forgets things. It'll come back to you soon. More importantly, said Master Lore, we have to get you back home. Do you remember where you're from? Esper thought for a moment before shaking their heads side to side. Hmm, I see, continued Master Lore. Do you remember what your home looked like? Or your town? Any landmarks? Again, Esper was clueless and continued to shake their heads side to side. Hmm, that's weird, observed Claire. You must have been under control for a long time for you to have forgotten that much. Do you remember your name at least? asked Master Lore. The Esper thought for a good moment before answering. Except for basic things like talking or walking, I don't think I remember anything before we met. What? exclaimed Claire and Luna. That's... I've never heard of a memory lost this bad, said Claire, turning to her master. Indeed, I think it might actually be the first time someone's been controlled by a knock thing and was left with no memories at all. Master Lord pointed out. How long ago were you abducted? It must have been a few years if you don't remember anything, said Luna. Asper didn't know what to say. Noticing the Asper's frustration beginning to bother them, Master Lord decided to interject. Either way, we can't just leave you here. How would you like to head back to camp with us while we figure things out? I'm sure Claire and Luna would be more than glad to look after you until we find your home, said Master Lore. Yeah, shouted Claire. We're the best Pokemon scouts in training. You'll be in good hands, said Luna. The four began to walk out of the forest. It had gotten a bit darker now, and in a couple of hours the sun would be setting. So, what would you like us to call you until you can remember your name? asked Luna. The Esper looked down as they kept walking, thinking of a good name that would also have a good meaning to them. Then, off to their side they noticed a small flower bed. The Esper stopped and bent down to pick one of the flowers, looking at it closely as they carefully twirled a flower in their paw. The Esper noticed the flower's many narrow purple petals under a second layer of three much wider white paddles, and then its center was a fuzzy black crown with a few tiny yellow dots scattered all around it. What is this? asked the Esper. Master Lore walked up to them, and kneeling by their side, he said, That is a flower. More specifically, it is called an Elioprim. 
named after an ancient word meaning, I'll wait for you eternally. Do you like that flower? asked Claire. Alioprim, said the Asper. I want my name to be Alioprim. Awesome, exclaimed Claire. That's a great name. Nice to meet you, Alioprim, said Luna. Can we call you Alio for short? asked Claire. The Asper tilted their heads slightly, and smiling, he answered, Of course, and then extended his paw to his new friends and continued, Nice to meet you, Claire, Luna, and Master Lore. Giggling with excitement, Claire and Luna placed their paw and hand respectively on top of Elio's. This was to be the start of a great new friendship, one that they hoped would know no bounds. Okay, that's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed not only the art time lapse, but also the story. So don't hesitate to leave a comment down below telling me what you thought. And if you'd like to see more art time lapses and further chapters of the story, you'll definitely want to like this video and subscribe to this channel because I will be making a lot more. Until then, I'll see you around.